Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my sincere apology for um, the initial hitch. Uh, we had uh, some technical issues, and also we had some difficulties in getting our presenter on from Metro Eye. Uh, we're still trying to get uh, him on board. Um, thank you very much for joining us for this second session. Uh, in case you missed the first session on um, with uh, Dr. Abiri on um, emotional support in times of crisis, um, you have not missed a lot. This is uh, just the second session. You can as well key into this and get um, all the information that you would want. Um, we're still trying to get our presenter on. And the moment our presenter comes on board, we will begin immediately. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay. Okay, um, while well, we, we are still expecting um, Metro Eye, I will just uh, go directly into about Lakeshore Cancer Center. Uh, in case you missed out, my name is Otis Eike. I work at Lakeshore Cancer Center, and I will be moderating this uh, very uh, session, uh, this very live Instagram session. Uh, Lakeshore Cancer Center is the first operational cancer center um, dedicated to cancer prevention, cancer screening, diagnosis, treatment, palliation, and advocacy. Um, it's it's over six years in of existence in general health, cancer education, and awareness. And um, we've had great contribution in the fight and the reduction of, uh, of cancer, of cancer st uh, dismal statistics. A lecture has organized two physical health fairs in 2018 on the island. And in 2019, we had another on the mainland. And this has always been in partnership with other like-minded health facilities who have given their time and their services to educate and raise awareness. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome, um, Dr. Innocent. I, I'm still trying Thank to... Very much. Yeah, my name is Otis Eike, and I am moderating this very live session. It's nice to have you on board. So I, I, was just, nice. I was just giving an overview of uh, Lakeshore Cancer Center before you uh, okay. came on board. And as I said, uh, Lakeshore has organized two physical head fairs in 2018 on the island. And in 2019, we had um, one on the mainland. And um, in 2020, the whole world paused because of COVID, and so did we. And as the world also became progressively creative and innovative in healthcare delivery, so have we. And today we present the Lakeshore Health Fair, which is virtual and is the first of its kind. Well, we have uh, about 15 health care providers over the next three days, and they will be sharing health nuggets to the public, as well as free and usually discounted services to be redeemed by the end of the month from each facility. Today we welcome Dr. Innocent Abba. I really hope I got that correctly. Um, welcome you. Yes, it's and, uh, Yeah, and as uh, you here representing um, your facility, Metro Eye, um, and your topic, you're talking on cataract. Um, it's treatable and also a major cause of blindness. And so we are so uh, excited and we are so uh, uh, willing to hear what the whole details about what you have to tell us about cataract. Also, I want to um, tell everyone who... Um, who is uh, uh, live with us, that you can send in your questions, you can send in your comments, all in the message box, and we'll try to address all of them at our given time. So thank you for your participation. Very quickly, I want to give a very brief talk about Metro Eye. Uh, Metro Eye Nigeria Limited was founded in 1982 and commenced operations in two domains, ophthalmology and optometry services. Been in the industry for over 30 years, um, their strict adherence to industry standards 
on our relentless quest to serve people with care and respect had differentiated them from other contemporaries. With a vision of being the leading and dominant eye care provider in Africa, they have invested in the state of the art technology to ensure that their patients get the highest quality of care. And our presenter today, Dr. Innocent Alba, is a dedicated and seasoned optometrist. With over six years practice experience, he obtained his Doctor of Optometry certification from the prestigious University of Benin and has worked with various eye care professionals since then. He's currently a mentor with the family of the Optometric Mentors and member Nigeria Optometric Association. He's a public health analyst and is very passionate about eye care research and development. He has published various articles and research, and he is currently the practice manager of the Lagos branches of the leading eye care providers in Metro Eyes. Welcome once again, Dr. Innocent Uba. I hope that Thank you very much. Uh, we would get to learn a lot from this discussion. And um, I'll be, I'll be, it's going to be a very interactive one. It's not really going to be one where you're going to be presenting for so, for so long. I get to ask questions and we're going to have interactions and also questions from the people who are streaming live as well will be entertained as well. So very quickly, okay. what, is, what is cataract in simple language? Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, cataract is an opacity of the lens. Uh, first of all, when we talk about the lens, um, vision is incomplete without the lens. The same way you have a lens in the camera, it helps to focus light on the retina. So when there's an opacity of the lens, it's no longer transparent and light is not able to pass through. And what that can do is it causes distorted images. It can cause um, double vision, some of the signs and symptoms. Most people with cataracts complain of this poor vision, both at far and near, and it can also cause glare, such that oncoming vehicle causes um, severe disturbance in their vision. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, uh, my next question is, uh, what would be the early symptoms and signs of cataract? Okay, I just mentioned some of the symptoms already. So for we, as um, optometrists or ophthalmologists, because there are about three major eye care um, practitioners who handle cataract. We talk about the ophthalmic nurse, we talk about the ophthalmologist, and we talk about the optometrist. So what we look out for as signs is sometimes there's a decrease in the visual acuity. That's how well you can see. So when, we, when you walk into the clinic, we check and we discover that your vision is, is below normal. You understand? We try to find out the cause. And sometimes if it's cataract, then we go ahead and then find treatments. Other uh, signs you could see is cloudy vision. Most patients with cataracts come to the clinic complaining of their vision being cloudy. Some will say um, it feels as if it wants to rain every time, even in the morning. So there's this hamatan vision as if they are in the dry season, even, you understand, every um, um, period of the year. So they feel as if the vision is not as clear as it should be. And some of the causes for this um, 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 condition has to do with um, age most times. As a matter of fact, once you're above, the probability of having cataract once you're above 70 is almost um, three times the probability of having cataract when you're less than 40. You understand? Another thing is diabetes is one of the conditions that can cause a sudden development of, uh, of cataract. Um, exposure to ultraviolet rays, which is very common for we in the in these equatorial regions of the world, uh, exposure to sunlight is one of the other causes of, um, of cataract. And sometimes we have trauma. For instance, I, I always encourage um, people who do um, menial jobs or work in factories or laboratories to always wear protective goggles. And the reason is because exposure to fast moving particles, sharp objects, can cause cataract when they hit the eye. And this can cause a sudden opacity of the lens and what we call traumatic cataract. So, and the final uh, cause of um, cataract is congenital. There are some children who are born with, um, with this condition. So, it's not only for the aged, even children can have it. Okay, well, I, it's, it's, it's great because I am just getting to know that children as well can 
come come up with a cataract. I oh, 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 I always thought that it's for the elderly and the old people. Yeah. So um, it's great to know about that. Okay, talking about um, um, some advanced symptoms and signs. I believe most of the signs you mentioned are the early signs and symptoms. Um, what are these symptoms that could be uh, that would have occur uh, during the advanced stage of this uh, disease? Okay, well, well, well I think Metro Eyes are having some network issues. Um, please, you uh, can keep your questions coming in. Just type in the comment box, and uh, we would entertain all your questions. They are logged out. Also, uh, Metro Eye will be uh, giving uh, a discount on their oncology consultation, sorry, on their uh, consultation for their eye screening and uh, seeing an ophthalmologist. They have a 30% discount. So it's an opportunity for you to visit their facility and uh, get uh, uh, yourself screened. So um, welcome back, uh, Dr. Innocent. Okay. Um, sorry about Thank the, you very the network hitches. Um, I was trying to I ask you that. Um, yeah. I got I your question. Ask, what are some advanced symptoms and signs? Someone who knows he or she has cataract and now deliberately or do, does not want to treat or even operate on, on that eye. What are, this, what are the advanced signs and symptoms that can come in and one could tell that this is glaring already. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one reason why I'm passionate about cataract and glaucoma, uh, last, last two months in March, we had the World Glaucoma Week where I was on radio and we are still talking about glaucoma. The reason why I'm passionate is because they are directly attached to what we call blindness. The advanced stage of um, cataract is when the patient is now not able to do the daily activities or activities of daily living. They are not able to carry it out effectively. And this is because it hinders or it obstructs um, um, daily activities. So they are not able to function as they should. So the end stage or the ultimate, the last part of the, the, the signs of cataract is when there is loss of vision or blindness. And what I'm passionate about this is because this is actually preventable or reversible. Now, cataract is the leading cause of blindness in Nigeria and all over, you understand? Because, for instance, I take my clinic for example. We do over, uh, of all the surgeries we do, we do about 70% cataract surgery. That's to tell you that most of the surgery we do are actually cataract. And there are so many people who have not really accessed care, and some of them, have actually accessed quacks, and that's why I'm really happy about such a program where we can be able to enlighten people about the importance of going for eye examination, following up, checking up, and undergoing the surgery. In my clinic, I can tell you the, the surgery is about 90 percent. Okay, maybe when we get to the treatment, we'll look at the fact that it's about 90 percent, um, um, the success rate is about 90 percent. So, why would you remain blind continuously or be struggling? with your activities of daily living or with your job when you could just um, get a good eye care service. Okay, um, something I, uh, I I picked from your, what you said, you said um, the blindness that is caused from cataract is reversible. So when someone yes. is blind because of, well, due to cataract infection and all, the person can also gain his or her sight back. So that's a very great information yes. I want the public to as well note. Also, um, yes. what do you think? How would you describe the impact on the lives of the patients when a patient is uh, faced with this trauma, like he or she has cataract? What is the impact? How would you describe the impact on the lives of the patients? Okay, so when we talk about cataract causing blindness, I've seen a lot of patients who, when they come into the clinic and they have conditions like cataract or glaucoma, they, 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 
maybe they work in a private organization, this organization just go ahead to just sack somebody because their vision or their output is, um, is not as effective as it has always been. And now these patients go back and they're not able to take care of In Nigeria, at least we know that the working class adult actually has at least three to five um, dependents on them. So when you sack such a patient who has cataract, for instance, because obviously they can't see their work and they keep giving you erroneous, um, 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 they, they don't do their work effectively. Yeah. So you as a private establishment, you want to sack them. And then this person is having three to five dependents. How do they cope? You understand? Yeah. So, but if they assess eye care on time or if they are privileged, because before the end of this course, I am this um, and um, discussion, I should be able to tell you how to prevent or some of the preventive measures you can imbibe to reduce the, 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 the probability of you getting cataract as you grow older. So if they are privileged to this kind of information, they would have prevented those occurrences where they now have full-blown cataract and is affecting their job. But I want to tell you that when you have full-blown cataract, it's almost like blindness or it's blindness. So because of that, definitely in Nigeria, we don't have, um, we don't have um, policies on ground that help blind people really, really integrate properly. So because of that, a lot of people who now finally get blind, they not only lose their job, they lose their, any other source of um, income, you understand, they lose their happiness and it goes on and on and on. So what I would advise, if you know anyone who has this surgery, um, who has this um, condition, it's best for them to, Seek an expert advice. Seek examina eye examination, counsel. You don't just leave them like that. And what pains me the most is it is actually reversible. You understand? So let them get their eyes checked and then they can know what is next. Okay, in the case you are just joining us for this Instagram live session, this is the second session for today. Um, and we are talking with uh, Dr. Innocent Uba who has uh, uh, given us a, a great uh, enlightenment and also discussed widely on cataract. It is uh, treatable and it's also a very major cause of blindness. And um, do not forget that Metro Eye they are kind enough to offer a 30% discount on consultation in, in, at their clinic. So if you're out there and you want to uh, um, be part of this, you can... Uh, 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 pay uh, uh, the clinic or visit and get your eyes checked for uh, uh, for thirty percent discount. That's really huge. And also, um, is there treatment available for this uh, cataract? What what are the treatment modalities and how are cases handled? People having cataract. Thank you very much. Um, there are stages of cataract. Cataract has different stages. We have the early stage or the incipient stage. We have the immature cataract, the mature and the hypermature cataract. Now, when you have the early stage, now we are able to spot early stage and we'll just um, give you some preventive measures to be prevent it from progressing to the mature stage. Now, but when you have the immature cataract, sometimes we go ahead to do some other tests within the clinic, like normal refraction. If there are glasses to give to you, if there are medications, we do that. But when it is matured, they recognize a world over, they recognize treatment is surgery. Now, there are a couple of medications you have out there that people will want to say, and they, they, people want to say, okay, you can use this medication when you have cataract. Or the ones, the ones that irritate me the most are the ones I see online. If you Google cor currently, herbal medication for cataract, herbal this, herbal that, you see a lot of, or a lot of concussions. Now, Maybe some of this may work, but from my experience, I've seen a lot of people who, after using some of this medication, the vision doesn't get better, it gets worse, okay? And in the northern part of the country, there's also what we call the couching. Now, couching is over 50% of blindness from cataract results from people going to quacks. You just go to somebody by the roadside who tells you, okay, they can cure cataract, and what they do is couching. It's a process that is recognized in the, in the medical industry as couching because they just push the lens a bit backwards and end up, maybe you may be able to now see light or you don't see, there's no improvement of vision. And when you come down for us to even work on that, we can't even work on that because you have already destroyed the whole structure. 
You understand what I'm saying? So, but for the treatment now, there are what we call intracapsular cataract extraction. We have the extracapsular cataract extraction. These are the earliest forms of treatment for cataract. For modern trend, we are moving towards what we call the small incision cataract extraction. Now, this one, you don't have to make a wide opening to remove the opaque lenses. You just make a small opening and you're able to take out the lens and introduce a new one. So that's a small incision cataract surgery and that's what is in vogue at the moment. We also have what we call the phaco emulsification and we have the laser. So all these processes, though the prices may be different and so are their prognosis. You understand? So the one, the one that has maybe the laser and the phaco emulsification is a bit much more accurate and the result is much more better. So, but all these new methods are available at Metro Eye. So we can do any of these procedures at your eyes, on, on, the, on the eye, and, and at the end of the day, the chances are very high that you will see better after that. Those are the treatment um, modalities that are available at the moment. In, 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 in terms of outcome, and, um, has, has the outcome so far been good in terms of treatment? What has been the outcome so far for, for these patients? Very, very good. Now, there are some few possible um, complications with cataract, as with any other surgery. You understand? But cataract is, um, sorry, the success rate in cataract here in my clinic has been very good, such that most of them are able to see far better than the way um, um, they came. You understand? Now, but the complications, there's what we call the posterior and the one of the complications you can get, like endophthalmitis, is a very rare complication, such that there is infection after the surgery, and you probably might need to do a second surgery afterwards. It's very rare. Another complication is the fact that there might be a development of opacity in the posterior lens, and then that also needs a second surgery. You understand? Afterwards. But majority of the cases are good after the first surgery. Another thing I would like to encourage people to know is that after the surgery, it's better when you follow the instructions because there are certain medications that are given to you after the surgery for applications. In fact, before the surgery, there are tests you need to do. And after the surgery, there are medications you are giving. So you have to follow those medications squarely because even your vision may not be restored 100% immediately. It takes between two to eight weeks. That's about maybe from two uh, weeks to two months for you to get the full restoration of the vision. So during this period, we have some encouragement. We advise you, okay, apart from coming for review and follow-up, it's also advisable you don't do heavy activity or you drive on the first day, don't drive, or bending down. So there are some of these activities we don't encourage, we encourage you not to do. Because when you do them, the intraocular lens that was used to replace the opaque lens might shift. And then you may be needed to come down to the clinic. So some of these are personal factors. We just encourage the patient. If you do these things the way we advise, the prognosis or the outcome will be far, far better. Thank you very much, Dr. Innocent. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, uh, this is a live session, and we are here with Dr. Innocent from Metro Eyes. If you have questions, you have comments, you have any other suggestion you want to give us in terms of uh, our topic we're discussing cataract today please feel free to go to the comment box and drop your message we'll definitely attend to them if you have friends you have families you have parents who you want to be part of this very interactive session please let them just uh follow us uh, and join us at lcc cares we are here and this is the second session of our virtual health fair so dr innocent i want to ask a question um has there been any situation where someone who has undergone a, a surgery to uh for cataract to remove cataract uh um gets uh the the case reoccurs again the patient uh, comes comes uh, comes with cataract again like a reoccurrence of cataract after surgery has is that possible yes it is and um that's what i spoke about earlier what we call posterior capsular opacification. Remember I said something about the lens being opaque and that's what we call cataract. So even after the surgery, okay, let me explain the types of um, surgery I, I spoke about before. We have the intracapsular cataract extraction, 
where the whole lens is taken out of the eye. But it has a way of causing some imbalance in the eye, and that's why they developed newer methods like the extra capsular. So for the extra capsular, the internal part of the lens that is opaque is taken out, or it's the capsule of the lens is left. So that capsule can become opaque again. I don't know, okay. So what I'm trying to say in essence is, if you take out the whole lens and introduce an intraocular lens, then it may not become opaque again because it's an artificial lens. We call it intraocular lens. But the current procedures don't take out the full lens. They take out a portion of the lens, which is the, red, the, the portion that is usually opaque, and leave out the capsule. It is on that capsule that the intraocular lens is fitted on. So that capsule can become opaque again, and that's what we call posterior capsular opacification. So to your, the answer to your question is, yes, there is probability of having the opacity after cataract surgery. For instance, opacity coming back. And that's what we call posterior capsular, um, posterior capsular opacity. And it can be removed. So it's not a, difference, a far easier procedure than the cataract surgery itself. Okay, we we we, yes. we have some questions from the in, in the comment box, and one question that I would want to uh, uh, bring up right now is uh, the prevalence of uh, the of cataract in Nigeria is 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 quite high because I remember when I visited uh, Lutz, the teaching hospital, I went there for my eye screening one uh, some time ago, and I could see the number of cases of of people there that were coming down with cataract was really high. So why is it that the, the prevalence is really high? What, what really is the cost in Nigeria presently? Okay, so there are three major causes of the high prevalence and um, it's actually a public health problem. One of those costs is, let's say, availability. Now, we have about 1,000 1, ophthalmologists who can do um, cataract surgery in Nigeria. Now, if you divide the population by 1,000, or the number of people who would have, or who have cataracts in Nigeria by the population, you discover that each um, doctor will be having over, say, 100 or 200 people. You understand? So we have fewer manpower to handle the condition, number one. Number two, we have affordability. Now, cataract surgery is a very delicate procedure that requires not just one um, health practitioner, but a group of health practitioners come together to, to carry out the procedure. So it's a bit expensive because of that. And so not everybody could afford. So that's why when we see people who have, like um, um, companies who have goodwill, who are interested in running programs for like free cataract surgeries and the rest, we usually encourage them because when they come in now, then we can work together to see how more people can get access to this thing and then at reduced cost. But on our own part, we have tried to make sure the cost is very affordable at a point where it is something uh, most people can, you know, can um, get access to. But still, at that point, not everybody can afford it. So affordability and availability are the two major reasons why the the surge, most people are still having it, you understand? Another thing is the fact that in this part of the world, most, most preventive, um, um, preventable conditions are still flourishing because of lack of knowledge or information. Some people don't know. Some people have never checked their eyes and they are 50, 60, 70, you understand? So even the people in the rural area, those people don't have access to, to eye care. So you see, it's... It's, those are three major reasons why we, we still have the problem going higher in Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Innocent. I must say that we've learned a lot from you today. And um, I will just ask one last question, and then uh, briefly, because we have very uh, limited time uh, in our hands right now, I will ask one last question before you can tell people who are, uh, who are joined us here to, uh, where your clinic is located and how they can assess care at your clinic or briefly now um there's this situation where they say people who are in their 80s or is there like an age range of people who come or who have who have cataract they cannot go into surgery because i remember my my dad when he when he had cataract he said i'm already 82 years old 
I don't care anymore. I don't want to do the the, the surgery. So how what really is how, how how do you handle that for people who are in their eighties and advanced or, or aged individuals? Okay, um, one of the reasons why cataract is actually a senile disease, that's an age-related disease, though it can happen earlier, like I've um, said earlier. Now, for people who are old, especially those who have other um, underlying diseases, for instance, someone who already has other conditions like glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration, or systemic conditions like hypertension or diabetics, these people have lesser prognosis, what we call guarded prognosis. We have to watch it because you might finish the surgery and those are the people that have the least success rate. You might finish the surgery and the difference is not so much as you expected. So for people who, for instance, for instance, someone who has diabetics now and, you know, wound healing is a bit delayed for someone with diabetes. So we would have to wait till your sugar level is stable before we can go ahead on the surgery. And where we cannot do surgery, we may recommend other medications like antioxidant, but like I said earlier, the recognized treatment is surgery. You understand? So if we can go ahead and delay till maybe their health is stable to a point, because we do some of this assessment, we check all the fasting blood sugar, blood pressure, do some scans generally before the examination. This is to tell us the state of the patient before the surgery. So if they are fit for surgery, we go ahead. If they are not fit for surgery or they decide not to go ahead with the surgery, there's not much we can do about that. You understand? So they will have to just manage their vision the way they are at thank, that moment. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Innocent, for your time. We really appreciate um, yeah. uh, being here with us and uh, in giving us such an interactive and interesting discussion on cataract. And also for everyone who has joined live, we want to also inform you that by 1.30 p.m. we'll be here again. And this time it's going to be on physiotherapy for neurological disorders with emphasis on stroke, Parkinson's disease, and dementia. And that will be coming up 1.30 live. And um, uh, we really want to urge everyone to key into these uh, virtual health fair sessions. So thank you once again, Dr. Innocent. And please, for everyone who wants to um, get in touch with your facility, can you um, let the people know how they can reach you, the facility, the location of the facility? Okay, we have um, over eight branches across Nigeria. In Lagos, we have uh, at number 22, Kefi Street, we have the head office there. At uh, uh, Bagada in the mainland, in Lagos, we have a branch at 32, Dia Street. If you want to reach us, you can reach us on WhatsApp or call on 091-361-30258. That is for our Ikoi head of his branch. I'll go over the number again. 091-361-30258. If you want to reach us on WhatsApp or call at our Bagada branch, you can uh, call the number 081-352-03653. Now, that's our Bagada um, contact um, number. The address, like I said before, is 32 Dia Street in Bagada, Lagos. And you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Metro Eyes Nigeria. So we'll be glad to have you in the clinic. And like I said, uh, like he has um, said before, there is a discount on the consultations. If you come in with a code, you'll be getting from them. So when you get that code and you come into the clinic, you get up to 30% discount on all consultations. Thank you very much. I will be hoping to see you soon. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Innocent. We really appreciate your time. And to everyone who has joined us today, we say thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you by 1.30 p.m. where we'll be here with the Physio Center Africa for physiotherapy and all. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Bye. Thank you.